Hey guys, uh, and gals, of course, uh, well, the 0.8% of that particular demographic who are subscribed to me. Uh, today, it's budget guitar review time. Now, my channel in the grand scheme of things is still pretty small, and uh, like I said, there's no girls, but uh, we're getting there. Uh, however, as a result of that, uh, well, as a result of being a small channel, not as a result of not having any girls, uh, I don't as of yet get a whole lot of action when it comes to sponsorships and or companies sending me stuff to review. Hopefully, that will change going forward as I'm now up over the uh, 10,000 subscriber mark and climbing. However, uh, the budget guitar and pedal company Donner has reached out to me for the second time now. Last year, I reviewed their Stratocaster style budget guitar and I gave it a good review. And in all honesty, uh, for the price, there's not much out there that beats it. Uh, I think that it got so many good reviews from guys like me that they jacked up the price recently by like 60 bucks. Anyway, I kept it, I uh, painted it, I modded it, and uh, I play it all the time, and this is it here. Uh, however, despite uh, my modifications on this guitar, at its core, it was and is a very playable and very decent guitar. Uh, that said, Donner are probably most well known uh, for their budget pedals, which can be found on Amazon somewhere in the $40 to $50 price range. And they're all pretty highly rated, uh, though I haven't actually tried any of them myself yet. Uh, hopefully they'll send me some pedals in the future to review. Now, Donner has just recently come out with their Les Paul style double humbucker guitar. This one, uh, which can be found on Amazon for the very low price of $159 or thereabouts. I think it's on sale right now for like $151. Uh, of course, it's higher in Canada at about $230, unfortunately, but uh, still very much in the budget guitar price category. Uh, regardless, Donner has uh, once again reached out to me to review one of their new budget guitars, and once again, I said yes. Uh, so awesome. So without further ado, let's get at it. Now, I already said that it's a Les Paul style guitar, but it's actually closer to the classic Les Paul Jr with its flat front and single volume and single tone configuration. It even has that classic Les Paul Jr. black and orange burst. Uh, not a burst finish that I'm in love with, to be 100% truthful, but it does come in a couple of pretty cool colors that we'll have a look at in a bit. When they contacted me, I requested one of the cool colors, but they were all out of stock in the warehouse, unfortunately. So I got the burst. But uh, that's an aesthetic thing, really, which has no bearing whatsoever on its build, sound, or playability. Uh, though, like I said already, this guitar, being somewhat uh, a copy on the classic Les Paul Jr. design, uh, but as far as budget guitars go, this particular guitar would probably go head-to-head -head with the Epiphone Les Paul Special 2, which is about $50 to $70 more expensive than this one, and has pretty much the exact same design. Except for one aesthetic feature that this one has that the Epiphone doesn't. Maybe you can see it. Uh, but we'll get to that in a bit. So uh, first up, let me run you through the specs on this guitar, and then we'll have a look at the build quality, and then run it through its paces, with a few classic rock and blues riffs and licks and uh, maybe a bit of metal. See how it sounds, uh, see how it plays. Uh, when it comes time to give this a play for the first time, I'm gonna play it uh, the way it came right out of the box and see how that feels. And if need be, we'll give it a quick setup and show you guys how to do that as well, should you need or want to lower the action. I'm gonna lower it a little bit, just from feeling it now, I can feel it's a little bit high to my taste. So uh, let's have a closer look at this, the Donner DLP-124. First up, it comes boxed, of course, and was very well packed and protected within, with a couple of free accessories included, or I don't know if they're free, they're in the price. This pretty decent Donner uh, gig bag with uh, a cable and a strap uh, tucked in the uh, pocket. Uh, now, uh, like I said, aside from this black and orange burst on this particular guitar, which I already stated is not my favorite, uh, the body is made of solid basswood, not plywood or anything like that. Uh, absolutely nothing wrong with a basswood body. It's, it's a light, cheap wood, ideal for mass-producing budget guitars and keeping the cost down. There's actually some very big-name players uh, out there who prefer basswood bodies, so nothing wrong there whatsoever. 
Uh, and uh, as I also previously mentioned, the guitar comes in four different colors. This burst, obviously, uh, straight up black, uh, and a couple of cool hip colors uh, as well. A very nice uh, light surf green, and this uh, pastel pink beauty. Uh, I wanted the surf green or pink badly, but uh, like I said, sadly they were out of stock. Uh, one really nice aesthetic touch that you don't often find on budget guitars in this price range is the cream colored binding all around the body and even around the headstock. Uh, a really nice touch that even the more expensive Epiphone Les Paul Special doesn't have. You've got your uh, traditional uh, Les Paul style tunematic bridge uh, set up on this, uh, a one volume, like I said, one tone configuration. Your pickup selector in the middle, down for the bridge pickup for a higher end tone for rhythm and soloing, up for the neck uh, pickup for a more creamy warm tone, and in the middle for a, a combination of the two. These all feel very solid. You know, uh, I'm not plugged in yet, but I'm sure they're fine. Uh, as far as the electronics beneath them, I'm assuming that they're your typical budget electronics that may, over time, an extended period of time, you know, the pots might get scratchy and whatnot, need replacing, or not. Um, you've got the classic uh, Les Paul double humbucker uh, pickup configuration, uh, bridge uh, humbucker, neck humbucker. Uh, don't know how they sound just yet, but we'll find that out uh, soon enough. Uh, it's got a Canadian maple neck with a satin finish. Feels really good, not too chunky. Uh, good for beginners and, and those with smaller hands. Uh, I personally have huge paws, uh, but still love a, a thin guitar neck. And this one feels really good. And uh, taking a quick uh, eyeball down the neck, the neck looks straight as a pin. There's no bowing or anything like that this way or that way. Uh, any setup that we may need to do should be strictly at the bridge here. Uh, the 22 fret fretboard is made of Indian laurel, uh, a wood very similar to Brazilian rosewood but grown in India and not as endangered as rosewood. I've never played a laurel fretboard before but it feels good uh, and not all scratchy right out of the box like a lot of other budget fretboards feel. Uh, no fret overhang all up and down the neck, no sharp edges, which is really good and something that's often an issue with budget guitars in this price range. <clears throat> it, it also has this very cool little uh, etched uh, neck plate on the back, which is kind of a nice touch with a little bit of Donner info on it. Uh, I'm supposing we have a plastic nut, uh, typical of budget guitars, typical of a, a lot of guitars really. Uh, anyway, so far so good. Uh, tuning keys feel, feel solid. Uh, tight, you know, feel pretty good. Uh, we'll see how it stays in tune after we uh, bang on it for a bit. Uh, very Gibson-esque uh, headstock on this one with the Donner logo. And like I said, uh, the binding all around the headstock, which is a really nice touch. Overall, uh, very impressed uh, with the build quality. Uh, paint job is good. The finish is really good. No flaws anywhere. Feels solid, fairly light, well-constructed. Uh, and the binding, perfect all around. No flaws on that either. Uh, the, the string action right out of the box is good. It's average at about 1.75 millimeters uh, at the 12th fret on the high E. I personally like a little bit lower. So after I, I play it, I'm going to bring that down to about 1.5 uh, millimeters uh, a little bit later and see how that feels to me. Uh, however, we're going to put it through its paces just the way it came uh, right out of the box. Uh, and then, after that, we're going to change the strings, uh, which I recommend all of you do right away because I can't pass judgment on the quality of the strings that it came with, but uh, most likely they're probably fairly cheap strings. Uh, I'm also pretty sure that these are nines, and I don't like nines. Uh, I think this came out of the factory with nines, and I prefer tens, so I'm going to throw a set of tens on this. Uh, then we're going to do at the end of this video a quick setup and we're going to lower the action just a hair uh, for my personal taste and I'm going to show you guys how to do that and it's quite easy on a Gibson style tunematic bridge if you don't have to be messing around with the uh, truss rod which we do not have to do. If you order this guitar and the action feels good to you then you're all set uh, but if you do want it lower or higher uh, you can just tune to this video to see how it's done at the end. Uh, Alright, let's see how she sounds and plays. Uh, it's late night here so uh, while I'm doing this, so I will not be plugging in my amp. I'm going to run it through some guitar software on my laptop, try a few different tone settings, clean and dirty and uh, classic rock crunch and with effects and, uh, you know, some without, and uh, a bit of rhythm, a bit of lead, a bit of classic rock, a bit of blues, maybe some metal. 
all the types of stuff one might play on a Les Paul style guitar. So I'm going to get plugged in and let's give this guy a shot and let's give it a run through, see what sounds, see what plays.
Well, I'm honestly very impressed uh, with this guitar. Nice clean tones, nice crunch, good metal tones as well. You know, I've, I've said this before, uh, but pickups, you know, these are obviously not expensive pickups, but uh, pickups are just one component of having a good tone. There's of course these, uh, there's your amp, whatever effects that you're using, plus a few other variables. Uh, and these pickups sound great uh, to my ear. Anyway, very impressed with this guy. Good build quality, nice finish, good action out of the box, clean fretwork up and down the neck, good tones and playability, uh, stayed in tune fairly well. A solid guitar all around for 160 bucks, I'd say. Uh, grab one of these, you know, in pink or green, and you've got a really cool looking and very playable budget guitar. Uh, for the price, uh, it's honestly hard to beat. Uh, for my first impressions, it's on par or better than the more expensive Epiphone counterpart, uh, the, uh, the Les Paul Special 2, which I've actually owned, reviewed, and played myself in the past. Budget guitars have come a hell of a long way since I was young. Uh, they're cheaper now than ever. Uh, they're better made. Uh, they need less work to be playable right out of the box. And they sound and they look better. Uh, so if you're looking for a new budget guitar under $200, I personally think you'd be hard pressed to find something as good as this Donner DLP 124. If the double humbucker uh, Les Paul style guitar is indeed what you're after. I initially uh, thought, okay, what am I going to do with this guitar once I'm, I'm finished reviewing it? Uh, you know, it's mine now, but you know, sell it for a few bucks, I suppose. But you know what? As I, I actually don't have a Les Paul style double humbucker guitar in my arsenal, uh, I think I'm going to keep this one and uh, add it to the stable because I like it. Uh, and don't forget, if you uh, if you'd like to purchase this guitar, please do it. Please do it through my affiliated link down in the description. That would be very helpful. And uh, I hope you found this review helpful. And uh, so let's do a quick two or three minute setup on this guitar and uh, lower the action a little bit. Uh, like I said, the action is fine. It's very average, uh, you know, uh, medium to low action right out of the box, but I prefer lower action. And if you prefer lower action, I'm gonna show you how to do that. Or if you prefer higher action, I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. So uh, let's do that right now. And uh, I hope this review was helpful for you. And uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers. All right, so let's drop the action on this guitar just a hair. Now I'm not 100% sure that I mentioned this in the video, but the guitar also comes with this handy little uh, string action ruler in uh, millimeters and in uh, decimals of inches. Uh, as I mentioned, I checked the guitar at the 12th fret already, where you should check it when you're measuring action. Uh, and it was set to a very average string height of 1.75 millimeters. I'm going to lower it to about 1.5 because that's what I prefer. See if we can get that done without creating any fret buzz. And if we do get fret buzz, we'll back it up a little bit until we don't have fret buzz. So let's give it a go. Now, uh, like I said, out of the box, the action on this guitar was not too high. It was just about right and suitable for a lot of players, but I like it lower and you may as well. Lower action generally means easier to play and that's important for a beginner if you happen to be a beginner. So uh, let's get started. So we're gonna take our little uh, string gauge ruler here in millimeters. And you can see right here, 1.75 right there. So you take this and you rest it between the strings on the high E side, right at the 12th fret, and then you eyeball it coming in level. And we can see that the string lines right up with 1.75. So that's where the action is right now. Over here on the low E side, it's between 2.0 and 2.25 millimeters. And that's normal for this side to be a little bit higher than this side. So 
Now, your tunematic bridge, so we, ha we have to lower the bridge. And uh, with a more expensive Gibson style guitar, these bridges often have dials on the side that you can use a little tool to turn the dial. Uh, and I should mention, you want to do this with your guitar at pitch. You don't want to detune the guitar to do this. Uh, though I've, I'm, I'm out of tune right now because I've done this once or twice already. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to little flathead screws right on top here. And we're going to turn this clockwise from this angle about a half a turn and you can see the bridge going down. And we're going to do the same thing over here on the low E side, about a half turn. And like I said, you can see the bridge going down. And then we're going to take our little string action ruler here, put it back on the 12th fret, eyeball it level, and we are nearly there, but not quite. So we're going to go down just a little more. And again, you can see the bridge going down. And then we're going to check it one more time. And we are down to 1.5 there, and on the low E side, we're down to about 1.75, maybe a little low. So let's bring this side back up a little bit. And then we're going to give it a little play, see if it has any fret fuzz, see if it feels good. That feels way better for me. And you're going to want to check it for fret fuzz all over the neck. Just especially climbing up the neck. That's where you're going to get it. And we've got no fret buzz. Perfect. I'm a little out of tune, but uh, that's because I moved the bridge. So uh, that's how you do that. That's how you lower the action on uh, 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 a Gibson style tunematic bridge. Pretty easy. Uh, and like I said, this one doesn't have the dials, just a couple of screws in the top. And uh, I gave those like three quarter turn and that lowered the action just perfect. So uh, anyway, I hope that was helpful for you and uh, we'll see you next time.